Hello and welcome. Today I'm unboxing the Huion WH1409. This is a big wireless drawing tablet. We will test it for drawing on Windows and on Mac OS. And uh, also we will play a little in Crayon Physics Deluxe. I got my tablet in a box that is inside another box, so let's get it out first. There we go, a huge package for a huge tablet. Nothing else in the box. So let's take a look at this packaging. Some marketing on the backside as well as specs. Just uh, a description on the side. And the model number, a logo at the bottom as well at the top. And on this side we have package contents, system requirements and address. Time to carefully cut open uh, the little pieces of tape. This is the part where I feel like a surgeon. One. The operation was a success. Here comes a big moment and uh, we see a little piece of paper and the tablet and uh, the top of this box is really soft. That is nice. Good to know the tablet had a nice trip. Let's take a look at the card. Thank you for choosing Huion. Our goal is to make you 100% happy with your new Huion product. And just look at that cute little lion, I think, right? Alright, time to get the tablet out. There is no obvious place to leverage it from, so I'll just uh, bend the box a little. Yeah, seems to work fine. And here it is, so big and freaking big. It's big. That's what it is, it's big. In here we have the manual in paper form, wrapped in plastic. Let's get it out. Graphic tablet user manual. And that is probably for cleaning. So we get a nice little white wipe to take good care of a tablet and two pieces of paper. But let's go back to the box. We have not unpacked everything yet. There is this compartment. And in it we have a cable, another cable, the stylus or pen, and two pieces of plastic, round ones. These are the pen holder and container for replacement uh, tips. The inlay paper is glued in so we can't remove it, but there's nothing under it. Let's take a good look at everything we just took out. This is the USB cable for the actual tablet. On one hand it charges the tablet, on the other hand you can just use it as a connector. You don't have to use the wireless functionality, you can just use this cable instead. This also a USB cable, this is the charger for the pen. The pen has a battery inside that cannot be removed, it also has to be charged via cable. Then we have the pen or stylus. Wrapped in plastic, comes with a cap. Let's unpack it, because that's what we do. It has a rubber grip and two buttons. And there is the tip. It has a very good weight. I was expecting it to be much heavier, considering that it has its own battery. It is very light. Now these two pieces of plastic are the pen holder. And inside of it we have replacement tips and the tip remover, the metal ring in the middle. And we can just combine them to make the pen holder whole again. Here in the top left corner of the tablet is the micro USB connector. It is quite uh, bulky and you have to carefully insert it and there we go. Right below the connector you can see the compartment for the uh, USB key which is also a wireless receiver. It contains the driver and has some storage space, 8 gigabytes, and a little warning is written on it. It is a normal phenomenon that the USB receiver might heat up when being used. To charge the pen we just uh, plug the USB cable for it in the back side of it. My pen uh, was emitting a red light which uh, would be blinking if it would need to be charged right now. So that one was uh, apparently already charged and didn't lose its charge while traveling to me. Alright, it is time to connect the tablet to the PC. Just uh, freeing up the cables here and plugging the USB cable in. The body of the tablet has three areas. On the right hand side we have the drawing area. At the left bottom we have the express keys which can be configured to emulate hotkeys like Ctrl Z for example. We will do that later. And in the top left we have the turn on switch as well as four indicators. The first shows whether the pen or one of the express buttons is being used. This is good for debugging. 
The second one shows wireless connectivity. The third one shows wired connectivity. And the fourth one becomes active when it really needs to be charged. The power switch is at the top left of a tablet and I'm just gonna turn it on. And if we look at it in the dark we can see that the red light is blinking, it means it is uh, charging and also it is quite low on power. But I was able to use it while it was plugged in without problems. Only in wireless mode I had some troubles, which is a good demonstration for uh, recognizing that problem. So if you have problems with a tablet while using it in wireless mode, probably you just need to charge it. We'll see that later. So I plugged in the thumb drive and on it was the driver which I had to extract. Uh, it was a zip file. And here it is. And it requires admin rights. And it also reminds us to turn off Photoshop etc. first. The default install location is a bit weird, so instead I uh, move it to good old programs. It creates a start menu and a desktop icon and just installs. Now this was the version that I got with the tablet that was in a thumb drive in it. And uh, I do not recommend it. I recommend that you go to the website and get the newest because first of all during installation it tries to overwrite a file in system in a system folder which is extremely uh, creepy to be honest. And second of all I had problems with this driver so I had to get the new one. I had to get it from the website which is fine. I mean Windows gets updates all the time. They can't magically update the drivers on the thumb drives. Once it is installed and running you will see this green icon in the system area in the system tray. It is really easy to test whether or not it's working, just press the pen pressure test button and in this new window you can just use it, just uh, try to draw and if nothing happens, you do have a problem, you should get the newest driver instead. Uninstall this one and get the newest, that is what worked for me. So I simply went to Huion's website and downloaded the newest driver for this tablet. And then it just started working fine. You can use the sensitivity setting in the tool to change it without having to shut down the software in the background. If you slide it to the left it is very sensitive and it almost immediately will go to 100% and if you move the slider to the right then it will be much softer and harder to reach full 100. This is what I like to call the tap test. See that? Did you see that uh, jump? That is a good way to test uh, whether a tablet has some kind of issues. For example, if a computer is very slow, that could happen, or if the wireless connection has a problem. And in that case, I think this jump happened because uh, it is on low power and I used wireless. So I just unplugged the wireless connector. There it is. And I will just plug in the regular cable, because again, the tablet is not charged yet. All right, and now let's see how fast it uh, starts working again. Oh, there we go. Just just right immediately. That was switching from wireless to cable mode. If you go from cable to wireless, I think it will take four seconds to actually start working again. So this is me using the Huion WH1409 in Photoshop on Windows. And uh, you really have to get used to the huge size of it. I'm basically just using the center right now. The tablet also works flawlessly in GIMP, for example. You just have to remember to go to the input settings and set it to screen. Otherwise it will just work as a mouse initially. So just save it and draw. And just a little bit of crayon physics. It's not like that game is pressure sensitive. If you know of any games that have pressure sensitivity, please let me know, that would be awesome. In case you don't know the game, it's quite unique. Basically physical puzzles with a very childish atmosphere. And you just draw different shapes to solve physical puzzles. And I'm not even gonna say that I'm good at it. Anyways, we're gonna go and check out the Mac in a moment, just uh, after I fail this little mission here. Yeah, that was not good at all. To configure the express keys you have to go to the advanced settings section and here you have each key, for example the top left one 
is set to control Z undo. And you can just change it, you can just change the uh, letter, keyboard key, I mean, and add control alt shift to the combo. So that's what you can do. And I think K2 should definitely be control Y. And uh, you might want to set some to plus and minus, and so on and so on. Now it's time to try out this tablet on my MacBook Pro. This is a rather old one, so it will be quite slow, especially while recording. So uh, I will switch to the camera pretty much immediately once it's installed. I just download it rather from the website. And this is the install process. You just have to click through, enter your password, and it installs really quickly. And then there it is, already started. Installation was a success. I'm just going to test it in GIMP real quick. Again, I have to go to Input Devices and make sure that all the Quartz ones are enabled to screen. And here you can see the weird slowness, but that's just because of a screen recorder, so let me just uh, switch to the camera here. And there we have it, much more smooth. Of course, this uh, Mac is quite old, so it's still not perfect. But the installation process for the drivers definitely is very smooth. And it works just as fine in wireless mode. As you can see, I unplugged the cable and just plugged in the wireless receiver. Works just as fine on Mac as well. This was the Huion WH1409, a beautiful and gigantic tablet that feels good and smooth and is affordable too. Please share your tablet stories in the comments, I love reading them. If you have technical problems with this tablet or another one, write it there too, I'm sure I or somebody else who reads it will be able to help you. Have a good one!